Hey everybody, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm driving back from Phoenix to uh, El Paso right now, uh, and I was, I'd driven up to Phoenix for the Semper Paratus AR-15 Armors course, um, up there, hosted at the, uh, Scottsdale Gun Club, and for, for one thing, I just want to say it's an amazing, amazing course, um, if it happens to be coming to your town or somewhere near you, I recommend it very, very highly. Uh, I just drove six hours, well, 12 hours round trip to take it. Um, so, and it was absolutely worth every, uh, every mile driven and every cent paid for it. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the course, it's taught by Will Larson, who uh, runs uh, Semper Paratus, is associated with psionics, uh, they make awesome rifles, and uh, Will is, the, uh, his knowledge of the AR-15 and, uh, you know, building them, maintaining them, uh, troubleshooting them is just unmatched. Dude knows pretty much everything. A uh, lot of questions in the class from folks who, uh, you know, just wanted to know more things, and Will had, Will had great answers for everything, so, uh, like I said, can't, can't recommend it highly enough, uh, and, but one of the things that I wanted to, to say about the, the class was, you know, a, a guy like me, uh, I've been shooting for quite a while, you know, and I kind of went into this thinking, well, I know, I know a lot about what I'm doing, um, I've built a bunch of guns, you know, I've wrenched on all kinds of rifles, um, but I, I also made sure that I went in with, with the, uh, you know, clear, clear idea that I don't know everything, all right, um, I know some, some folks hear me talk and think that I think I know everything, but I don't, and, um, uh, a class like this really, really helped to to emphasize uh, or to to really show the, the things that I didn't know and to help me understand them a, a lot better. You know, I know, you know, I could I could say, okay, I know that if this is the problem, this is the solution. What I didn't know was why that's the solution and that's the sort of thing that, that we'll really spend a lot of time going over is it's easy enough to say, well, if you're having this problem, this is how you fix it. Well, okay, but why does that fix it? You know, what, what did I change mechanically or operationally that caused whatever malfunction or whatever issue I was having to be solved? Uh, and so that's just the, 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 the value, uh, the knowledge that's gained in this, you know, like I said, I know quite a few things about ARs, I, I've been shooting them for a long time, I've been working on them for a long time, I took 10 pages, 10, 10 pages of notes of things that I didn't know, things that I learned, uh, you know, new specs, count, uh, you know, comparing things, measuring stuff, all kinds of stuff, 10 pages of new knowledge that I've gotten you know, after over a decade of shooting these guns and working on these guns, that's how much I got to learn. And the, 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 the sort of the second thing I wanted to talk about, you know, like I said, I'm a guy who, uh, you know, I went in with a, a fair amount of knowledge. Uh, for, for one of the, the requirements for the course, you got to bring your own gun. So you bring in a rifle that, uh, you know, we take apart, uh, kind of talk about the, the quality of components, things like that. Um, the, the, I took, I took two rifles with me, uh, sorry, I took two carbines with me. We, there, there was a lot of discussion about the difference between carbines and rifles and, and matching uppers, M4 uppers and rifle barrels, all kinds of stuff. Like I said, you know, those are things that I've just, terms I've always sort of used interchangeably, and most people probably still do, and I bet I'll keep doing it because it's just do it, but now I, of course, know that there's a difference. So I took two mid-length carbine guns with me, 
let's see what it is. And uh, one of them, uh, both of them are Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, lowers that I built up. Uh, not the most high end components in them. ALG triggers. Uh, actually, I think one of them is a BCF trigger. Uh, if you could tell me the difference between the two, you're smarter than I am. Uh, a bunch of uh, BCM components, and then just sort of general pins and detents and springs and stuff like that. Again, like I said, nothing fancy. Uh, one of them is a uh, complete Sons of Liberty Gunworks upper. It is their East India uh, stripped upper that I bought uh, through a Geisley Mark IV rail on it. The other one is a complete Colt upper, 14 and a half, pinned and welded. Uh, it's got a uh, AAC breakout muzzle device on it because I do have a suppressor to put on it. Uh, so these are two, you know, the uppers, uh, we discussed the, the uppers really where all the magic happens, right? The chamber, the, the barrel, the bolt carrier. That's where the that's where the explosion is contained. That's where all the uh, pressure is. And so, uh, for me, you know, these factory built uppers are sort of the the, the more reliable ones that, that I've got. Uh, uh, I I took the the reason I took those two again because I know that they're they're well built, and then also because the Sons of Liberty upper is a free float. Uh, mid-length system, like I said, with that guy's rail on it. The Colt is a mid-length gas with the front sight block on it. So it does have the old, uh, you know, E2 front sight block and front sight post uh, on there. And I and I brought that, I did that purposely because those are two very different systems um, and two very different sort of, you know, techniques you need to know if you're going to be working with one if you want to, uh, you know, God help you if you want to change that, that uh, front sight block to, to uh, front sight base to something else. Uh, we talked about, you know, the, the, the sort of mechanics of the pins and the uh, barrel cuts and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, like I said, I brought the both of them because I wanted to, you know, be able to talk about it and learn and have two examples, one of, uh, example of each of them right there with me. And so that's what I did. Um, and, you know, looking around the room, there were, uh, I believe there were 13, maybe 12, 12 students in this class, uh, a mix of all kinds of folks. There were some, uh, three or four guys who were pol various police departments, um, nearby Phoenix, uh, a, uh, uh, Marine, and let's see, two guys who were, uh, a videographer, I don't know, um, I don't know anything about videos, and then, you know, and then uh, just a couple of guys who are hobby shooters, you know, want to have some fun. And then a guy like me, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I take it, I take it more seriously than some people do. Probably more seriously than I should sometimes. But uh, it's a, it's a passion for me. It's what I like doing. So, so there you have it. Uh, and yeah, and a couple of guys who, you know, I think at least one guy who thought he knew a lot more than he did. Um, like I said, I've worked on guns, these guns for a long time. I went in knowing that I had things to learn, and, uh, there's at least one guy in there who just thought he knew everything, and, uh, I give the guy credit, of course, for being in the class, for showing up, taking the time and the money to be in there, um, but I think he was sort of of the mindset that he wasn't going to learn a whole lot because, uh, because he had already built 13 guns, and he had a whole bunch of Elfman triggers, and so he knew what he was doing. Uh, we won't talk about his weird little uh, Bushmaster AR pistol thing that had a really bad chamber on it. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, 
but one of the, the, the things that I did want to note is, you know, we talk a lot about quality of guns and what guns are good and what guns are bad, um, failure rates, uh, guns being out of spec, all kinds of stuff like that. But, you know, one of the things that, that, that was talked about the very the, on the first day of the class, is a two-day class, about 17 hours total classwork. Uh, one of the things that was really emphasized was you want to have that gun ready for the moment. All right. And the moment is, could be a number of different things. You know, for me, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a proponent of ARs for home defense. And so for me, the moment might be when scumbags are knocking down my door sneaking in the back door trying to, you know, just coming in to, to rob my house. You know, they just want to come in and steal all my stuff. You know, maybe they don't know I'm there. Uh, maybe they're willing to hurt me or my family. And so that moment is what my rifle is for. And whether your gun costs thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or less as long as you know that that gun is going to be ready for the moment then use whatever gun you've got all right there were four four guns in that class that would be that would be considered you know low tier uh, subpar brands, um, a DPMS, a Bushmaster, and a couple of M&Ps. You guys know I like the M&Ps, but I'm under no illusions that they're not, they're not top shelf shooters, obviously. Uh, and, you know, to, to his credit, Will made very sure, you know, very clear to say that these guns are not, are not top notch. They're not the best guns that you can get to the credit of the guys who brought those guns, they did not take that as an offense. What they did was say, all right, my DPMS is, to quote Will, an abomination. What can I do to make sure it's going to work for me? And so we spent time talking about, well, you can, you can do this thing, you can do that thing. Uh, check your chamber. I've got the, you know, got the reamer, check your headspace, uh, you know, make sure that your trigger spring is correct because too many guns leave the factory with just like bad springs with shit uninstalled, uh, shit, things installed wrong with out of spec chambers. And so you can take that DPMS, that, you know, $400 gun and inspect all that stuff. That should be the very first thing you do when you get a gun. Inspect it, make sure everything is as it should be. Anything that's not, you know, you can decide, well, okay, this is too far out of spec or too far out of, you know, the, the, the range of, of acceptable, uh, of what's acceptable to me. It's, it's, it's out of here. I'm done with it. I'm going to, you know, I've decided to go somewhere, I'll go a different route. Or you can make, start making some changes. I'm not, I'm not going to call them upgrades necessarily, um, because upgrade, I don't know, it's just the, the connotation of it is, is a little weird, um, but I'll, I'll call them, uh, you know, there, there's steps you can take to get your, get everything in, in this spec. So like I said, check your chamber, uh, make sure you're shooting the right ammo, make sure your, uh, trigger and everything and your hammer is installed correctly. Uh, and like I said, these guys who brought in these guns were absolutely receptive to uh, the, the, the criticism, uh, the constructive criticism, and the, the guidance towards how to uh, how to work with those uh, with those guns to make sure that uh, they keep on working. You know, of course, there was there was a guy saying, "Oh well, you know, I've had this DPMS for." For four years, and it, it 
uh, it's, it hasn't given me an issue yet. And hey, man, more power to you. That that's fantastic. Uh, he's he said he had it about four years, two thousand rounds through it. All right, hey, that's fantastic. That's that's great. It's worked for you wonderfully for now. And after taking it apart and looking at the gas keys, you know, the screws holding in that gas key. We sat down as a group, you know, with the you know, with the correct tools. Learned how to take those screws out, get the correct screws, not these YFS crappy little screws fasteners. Put the right screws in. Slip that Moax tool on it. Stake those screws down. And yeah, you know what? That bolt carrier is not the best bolt carrier group in the world. But we know, we now know, and that shooter now knows that his gas key is solid. He's not going to be losing gas. That gas key is not going to vibrate loose now. It's not going to get shook loose. He, that, that is an upgrade. That's a positive change to that gun that will make it more reliable in the long run. And it took five minutes took five minutes to do it so then the question becomes well you know should I have to do this stuff well you shouldn't have to of course because any quality built gun that's coming out of the factory should already have that stuff done chambers should be in spec but they're not companies are cutting corners you know you've got to find a way Palmetto State has got to find a way to sell complete uppers and complete lowers for 175 bucks a pop and ship them out and still make money. Hey, man, that's capitalism. More power to you, right? If you guys want to buy those, fine. I'm not going to stop you. If you ask me for advice on whether or not you should buy a Palmetto State Armory gun, I'm probably going to say no. All right? And we heard some, some stories about some other brands. Uh, with, with various other issues, and, you know, QC issues, brands that I would normally say, yeah, they're pretty good, I don't have any problem with them, but then you hear these these stories from, from uh, you know, guy who's been there, seen it, got a little better, uh, you know, up close and personal with them in the factories, and then you think, hmm, well, okay, uh, I'm thinking twice about that, uh, I'm not going to name names, because I just, it's not that... Uh, but uh, you know the, the, the overarching here now that I've gone on for 20 minutes or so is again find find this class learn what you've got learn what you don't have learn about how to maintain everything you've got keep it running, keep it ready for that moment. Um, there are plenty of, of people and places offering training on how to shoot quickly, how to move from, from cover to cover and blast bad guys in front of you. Uh, but you won't get far with that if blow a primer because you have 5.56 five, ammo in an out of spec chamber and it blew up uh, and you've got a primer pocket jammed under your trigger. Your gun becomes un unoperational. And if you don't know how to fix that, if you don't know how to uh, check your gun to avoid that in the first place, then all the training, shooting training in the world uh, comes out meaning nothing. Uh, so seek out training, seek out knowledge, learn this stuff. It is not, it's not rocket science, but it's not stuff that you're typically gonna learn just watching YouTube. Again, Semper Paratus Arms, uh, 
Uh, you can find them online. Just Google it. They're on Facebook too. Uh, find a class near you. Will is all over the country all year long. Uh, he does the two-day armorers course and a one-day builders course. Builders course is great because you get to build your own uh, psionics carving, 16-inch carving that you build. Take it home with you when you're done. Yeah. Then you've got a great, great gun. Uh, so find them. Chances are they're going to be somewhere near you at some point within the next 12 months or so. Um, for my El Paso folks, if you are in El Paso or uh, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, wherever within you know 100 miles or so, a couple of couple hour drive, if you are interested in the class message me, get in touch with me, um, I had, did, did, did talk with Will about trying to get him to come through El Paso and teach the class, um, so let me know if you'd be interested, we're going to try to see about setting that up, it'll be sometime next year, uh, he's a busy guy, the calendar fills up fast, um, so let me know and I can uh, start trying to get some information, see if we can find a location, uh, a good shop that's it for now. Um, I am in New Mexico and it is very, very flat. And I'm going to finish this before I get to Lordsburg because Lordsburg is a black hole and if you're not paying attention, nothing escapes from it. All right. See y'all later.